Cross Championship visits one of its legendary tracks for the Rockstar Energy Drink Unadilla National in New Berlin, New York. And all eyes will be on the 2008 champion, James Stewart, making his much anticipated series return after a year and a half hiatus. And later, it's the due tour Wendy's Invitational from Portland, all part of an Ally Sports doubleheader here on NBC. But first, we go to our New York studios. Been dominating this tour, but James Stewart is coming back to motocross for the first time in two years. They've never raced each other outdoors. This is Ally on NBC. And you're watching the Lucas Oil AMA Promoto Cross Championships. We're in the beautiful rolling hills of upstate New York for round nine of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship, the Rockstar Energy Drink Unadilla National, the legendary Unadilla Valley Sports Center. First moto is already in the books here, and what a spectacular race we had. Much anticipated battle with James Stewart and Ryan Dungey. James Stewart, a bad start, moves up to second place early, getting around the 29 of Andrew Short, but he would later go down and finish third. And it was too little too late for the number seven, because Dungey had gotten away and wins our first moto today. But there's another moto in store for us. Hello, everyone. Jason Wygand, your host of Ally Sports, continuing coverage live on NBC of Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross. Yeah, we've already finished up one moto, but there will be another. Why? Well, let's give you the 411 on motocross and show you how this works. Two motos, 30 minutes plus two laps each in duration, and they will total up the finishes of each of those two races to determine an overall winner. And with that said, let's bring in our four-time AMA National Champion, Jeff Hemming, to break down this battle at Unadilla. James Stewart, our 2008 champion, is back in action for the first time in two years, but he admitted he was a little tired in that first race back. Well, yeah, coming into this event, there was a tremendous amount of excitement, but there was a lot of unanswered questions. How fast will James Stewart be? What will his physical condition be? Can he ride at this top level? Qualifying practice, he answered the questions. He was fastest both times, but in the first moto, a fall and a strong ride only produced a third place. Ryan Dungey still the man. And we cannot forget about Clement DeSalle from Belgium came in with a very strong second place. Well, we'll see if Dungey can continue that momentum here into Moto2. For more, let's get down to the starting line with Aaron Bates, who has James Stewart. It has been a long, highly anticipated arrival of return to racing for the number seven of James Stewart. James, the fans are so excited to have you back. You just got cleared to ride just only five weeks ago, and this is basically a whole brand new bike to you. How are you feeling coming in? I mean, I feel like I just want to have some fun and, uh, you know, just see where I'm at. You know, I think, uh, you know, we still got a little bit to improve, you know, probably a lot of it. So, you know, I try giving all my first moto and then uh, see what I have for this one. So, you know, I think uh, we'll hopefully make some changes to the bike. So hopefully that'll be easier. But uh, get that number seven Yamaha up on the podium, I'd be happy. I think you can always guarantee James Stewart will give it 100%. James Stewart is back. I'll tell you what, Aaron, this is going to be an unbelievable show. Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross, not only the return of James Stewart to the series, battling it out with our point leader, Ryan Dungey, but so many other superstars who are here, including Brett Metcalf, Andrew Short. You add it all up, and it could be one of the greatest afternoons you've ever seen in this sport, and you folks are going to see it all. The Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship is brought to you by Lucas Oil, proud sponsor of the AMA Motocross Series. By Rockstar, party like a rock star, now available in 16 countries and 14 flavors. By GoPro, the world leader in wearable HD sports cameras. Be a hero, GoPro. And by Toyota. When I first started racing, biking. Ryan Dungey has been an unstoppable force. He has overcome every obstacle and rider in his path while collecting an astounding string of titles. But now, as Dungey continues his 2010 championship quest, the 2008 champ, James Stewart, makes his return to motocross. With a pair of 250 titles and a record number of wins in that class, Stewart established himself as a force to be reckoned with, and he stepped up to the Premier Division. But despite 16 career overall victories on a 450, injuries have kept him from becoming a consistent, dominant force. Now, all eyes 
are on these two as they square off in a head-to-head -head battle of speed, strength, and desire. Welcome to Unadilla. You are in store for some of the best motocross racing the world has ever seen. It's the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship, round nine at Unadilla Valley Sports Center. Jason Wygant, Jeff Emig, Aaron Bates here to give you the call. Jeff, take us for a ride here in Unadilla. Well, Unadilla, one of the uh, classic natural terrain tracks that we have here. They've changed it a little bit over the years, but of course the gravity cavity remains. Uh, a couple of new tabletops that take you back into a tricky left-hander. Pretty fast section of the track here as it really starts to open up. These stair steps that are gonna come up through here are gonna be a key part of the track. And of course, the sky shot. And then we get to the downhill U-turn, the wall. Check, check this out. This is how you head down here, make this right, and then it drops off sharply. And the problem is, is this turn here, it looks like it could be flat, but it's on and off camber. Just such a difficult section to uh, negotiate, especially when there's 39 other riders. Nice shots there from our GoPro hero cam. That was practice. We already have our first moto complete, and we'll show you the highlights. Stewart on the seven gonna get pinched off by the 29 of Andrew Short, and that allows the five of Dungey to grab the whole shot. He's in the lead early. Stewart going to work here. Working on 29. Look at Short try to get him back. On the inside, they battle. Stewart comes off the bike, somehow saves it and gets the spot. So Stewart is totally on the gas as Wyndham goes down here. One of our veteran favorites knocked out of the race with a big crash. Back up front, Stewart going to work on the man in second, the Belgian from up the Sal. And watch this move here, just puts the hit on the Sal and then gaps a little bit, starts to pull away from the Belgian rider. And then in the uh. exact same corner, he falls, manages to keep the bike going, but notice the Sal picks him off at the same spot. While this was going on, Dungey was able to slowly but surely pull away, wins the moto. Stewart got back onto Sal's rear fender and tried to make the pass for second. But in the last lap, the Belgian held him off. So Dungey and Stewart, the big story coming in. But the visitor from Europe actually splits them. And you take these points, we'll race again, coming up in just a few moments. And then we'll try to determine an overall winner. And this is going to be interesting. You never know what happens in motocross. But right now, Dungey is the man with the target on his back. Wit that moto win and also just announced he is the leader of America's team at the Motocross of Nations coming up in September. Yeah, which is ironic because uh, DeSalle will be riding for Belgium. So yep. maybe a good chance for the Belgian rider to gauge against uh, the reigning champions, Team USA. And Andrew Short will also be on the team along with Dungey and Trey Kennard will represent the United States in the MX2 division for 250cc bikes. That's a strong team and it's only the third time ever the race has been held in the United States. James Stewart not on the team, and he was hoping to use these final rounds this year as an audition to get on the team, but they announced the team before he had a chance to lay a wheel on the track. That's all history. It's all conjecture, it's all talk. Now it's time to go racing in our second moto. Stewart, Dungeon, Saul, Short, Josh Grant, Brett Metcalf, Ben Townley, the best motocross riders in the world, Jeff, I'm excited. But well, here we go, the convergence of a a lot of talented riders oh, yeah. here, and this is a, the start is going to be key here for Moto2. Can Dungey, your points leader, keep the streak going? Here we go, folks, live on NBC. And this time it's the 29 of Short. Will he get to the strike first and lead them? No, it's the 23 of Justin Brayton on the Joe Gibbs Racing Yamaha into the number one spot. And James Stewart, not good out of the gate. No. He's going to be just outside of the top 10. Dungey up inside the Ooh. top five. Metcalf coming through around 10th. Stewart behind him. You see guys just banging bars. Metcalf almost went down early on. We're looking for Stewart. There's Dungey, about fourth. They jump out of the gravity cavity, one of the roughest obstacles in the series. And how about Clement de Salle from Belgium yeah. riding the Suzuki. Once again, another great start up inside the top five. There you see Stewart just being bumped around. I'd say he's middle of the pack right now, the number seven. Great, now the 23 in the lead, but here comes Andrew Short trying to get by him. Oh, great. Whoa. Gets a little kicker, comes up way short, misses the turn. Is that going to allow short? Not quite. Great is able to hold him off. DeSalle in third, Dungey in fourth. Who's going to establish themselves early in this second moto? Short goes to the inside. Nice move by the Red Bull Honda man. No, 
Brayton's gonna try to come back. Short's got the line covered, he's in the lead. The track is so difficult right now, run it up from a previous 250 moto. You can see they put quite a bit of water down, but you see how it's dark in spots and the soil is lighter in others. Where it's dark, it could be wet and slippery, and where it's light, pretty good, could be dry, you know, but overall, it's really inconsistent, and the track is not worked in yet. Check out the battle here, Jeff, as Dungey goes after Kamal DeSalle for third place. Side by side over the, one of the biggest jumps on this tour, the Sky Shot. DeSalle on the 463, able to hold off Dungey. This fantastic ride in Moto 1 by both of these Suzuki riders. Uh, just outstanding efforts, and Dungey has been just, he's been good, he's been great. He just does his thing, it has not been rattled at all, just goes out, steadily works his way to the front if he doesn't already have the lead, and it's hard to beat a guy in that condition. And then right behind him, you've got some real talent. Ben Townley coming through on the 101. We'll be the next rider to try to challenge Dungey. What can you say about Gasol? Only the second time he's ever raced in the United States, he's going after the second place rider, Justin Brayton, and trying to leave Dungey behind. Well, and uh, DeSalle, when he rode here last year, uh, had just an awesome ride yeah. uh, on basically what was a, uh, you know, a stock bike, a production bike. Now he's on a, on a factory uh, Suzuki here, great equipment, and uh, really showing what sort of talent he has. Look at how many ways there are to go on this track. They call out different lines. Dungey to the inside, Saul on the outside. Now Dungey switches back to the outside. They leap out of that gravity cavity, and they call it gravity cavity. When you hit the bottom, you chi out. The gravity force forces you down onto the motorcycle. It's a lot of strength to get in and out of that. Wow, look at that close-up shot right there. You see how muddy it is in that one dark spot there. And then you go to these off-campers where there's all these little rocks like marbles. Yep. Okay, and then you get on those, then the bike wants to skate around, and either the front wheel break loose or the rear wheel breaks loose. So this track, extremely rough right now. So the chassis setup and the suspension settings are key. And then also, for the rider, he really has to negotiate the opening part of this moto here with uh, you know accuracy because the track's very tricky right now because of the water and the condition uh, the, uh, you know, of the race surface. An update there, Stewart was 15th at the end of lap one, and he's got to deal with all these rocks. They call it roost. You got a rider in front of you, 50, 60 horsepower machines are just spewing you with rocks. Well, and to put it into perspective, in 15th, his lap time was a 2.22 on the first lap. Short was a 2.13, wow. so he gave up nine seconds or 13.4 uh, behind the stripe. Yeah, because he's stuck in traffic. Here's Dungey working on DeSalle again. Here we go, side by side. And the Belgian's still able to hold off the kick from Minnesota. Let's see if Dungey can double this and get the drive. Ooh, and just going comes after Brayton. Maybe DeSalle's best hope to survive the challenge of Dungey is to get into second, and he does. Nicely done. He splits Brayton. As they sit right now, DeSalle would have the overall. Yes. We'll take the points from the first race, combining the points from this. So Dungey got to start pushing the envelope, go after the 23, not let his fellow Suzuki man get away from him. Yeah, and remember those points were 25, 22, 20 uh, for the top three there. And Dungey makes the move on break. Now you see the countdown clock at the top of the screen. That's the time, 25 minutes to go, and then we'll bring out the two laps to go sign. Yeah, 30 minutes plus two laps. The riders have already done one today, so they're already physically taxed. Okay, um, and they've already taken all this abuse that uh, this track gives out uh, one time, and now they have to do it again, and the track is in worse condition, and it's much tougher, uh, even even this moto, than before. Here is Dungey challenging the song. What a spectacular season the 20-year-old from Minnesota has had. A rookie has never won the Supercross and Motocross titles in the same season, and Dungey is working on that right now. We'll get in-depth with Ryan Dungey and his rookie season when we return. Stay with us. real secret to winning the 2010 Supercross Championship in his rookie year? I'm not telling. Ryan is like a quiet storm. Ryan Dungey from the B class of the amateur race to the factory race team has paid big dividends for rock star Makita Suzuki. After early struggles in the 250 class, Dungey has found his way to the top of the sport and the titles have followed. 
since May of 2009, Dungey has won every major championship he has contested. And with a 95-point lead in the 450 Motocross Series this year, he hopes to become the first rookie ever to capture the Supercross and Motocross title in the same season. In a sport that has seen great champions the likes of Hanna, Stanton, McGrath, and Carmichael, Dungy is poised to stand alone. But despite those accomplishments, the 20-year-old Minnesota native still faces criticism. There are those that say that he has not beaten the best. Mechanical failure cost Christophe Porcel a shot at Dungy's 2009-250 motocross title. And injuries kept the top contenders from the racetrack this past Supercross season. And only Chad Reed returned to challenge Dungy at round one of the outdoor tour this year at Hangtown. But now Dungy has a chance to answer his critics. When the gate drops in a few moments from Unadilla, James Stewart in his number seven Yamaha will be on the start line, ready to go head to head with the current points leader. Ryan Dungy has an opportunity to rise to the occasion once again. While the 2010 450 title might be his for the taking, how history looks back at his season may be defined by the next four races, starting right now at Unadilla. This is all part of Ally Sports. And check out AllySports.com. That has everything action sports. And that includes coverage of our first motos each and every week of Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship Racing. Check it out for videos, photos, results, athlete bios, and more. That's AllySports.com. Everything action sports. And that, of course, includes motocross. Here's what's happening here. Ryan Dungey has just turned the fastest lap of this race. He is still in third, going after the Belgian. Clement de Salle with Andrew Short leading the way. Jeff Emming, this is the way Dungey has played it a lot this year. He starts off, figures out where he needs to be, and then turns it up. Yeah, and as we just crossed the stripe there, it was the lap before he set a 2.11.9, which is the fastest of the moto, but this last lap around was a 2.13.3, and Short and de Salle running first and second are both a little bit quicker than that, but as you can see, it's gonna shrink up, and then it's gonna space out, and it gets back and forth. The bottom line is I am quite sure that uh, Andrew Short is gonna have a lot of company here. This is shortly. This is impressive, though. He's dealing with some pressure. It's only going to get worse because you know those Suzuki's are going to come after him. They're all getting feel for the course, where the lines have changed. Like you said, they put some water down between our first race and our second. But once they figure this thing out, it's going to be max speed all the way to the end. Short nailing nice. that double on the top of the uh, of the stair steps there. Um, that's a good line. And if he can use cool. that to, uh, well, yeah, the 450s, if you go to the inside, you actually jump off that last one instead of jump over it. But you can see Dungey getting a mouthful of roost right now, pulling another tear off. Yeah, what happens is there they get the film over their goggles. They can rip that film off and get clear vision, and you need it. Talk about the rocks and such on this track. They've done a great job putting new soil down to lessen the amount of rocks. You'd much rather get hit by dirt than boulders. Well, yeah, and new soil, it's top soil that yep. has washed off over the over the decades of racing here, and then they go grab it from the bottoms of the, you know, of the valleys, and they spread it all across, you know, across the top of the track here, yep. and it's made for just an awesome surface um, here, especially around this next section here where it's so loamy. See how deep those ruts are? That's because of that, the, just that mulchy soil that they have up here in upstate New York. Desal right now with Short Dungy there. We've got a three-rider battle for the lead as we approach the halfway mark. Look at the fans there up against the fences, just, just anticipating what's going to happen here. They're setting each other up at the moment, but next couple of laps, you're going to see some guys trying to make moves. Yeah, I mean, there's a possibility here, the way that DeSalle is riding, that he yes. can come away with the win here because he put on a strong ride in the first moto. Remember, he's never raced here, so now he's getting a little more uh, used to this track here, yep. starting to figure out how the track's going to flow. And uh, there's the element of surprise. Dungy has battled short in this position several times this year and has been able to make his way around, but it's a complete mystery for his one weekend only teammate, Clement DeSalle. Dungy doesn't really know how to play it against this guy. They've never really raced. Got to just use your head at this point, try to ride smooth. Remember, Dungey's got a massive points lead. Wait a minute, James Stewart, who had the bad start. We now hear that Stewart has pulled off of the racetrack. He had gotten up to about 11th place. He's fighting to get into the top 10, but he has pulled off. He did tell us at the end of Moto 1 he was tired. Maybe he wasn't quite ready yet. So much action right now as Gasol goes for the lead, and James Stewart is out. Look at this. 
Gasol wants a piece of the 29 to get the lead. Not quite able to pull it off, but Short knows he's there now. Look at this. As it starts to, it'll get into a little one-line situation here, and DeSalle's gonna try to stay out of the roost. Yeah, see, and he crosses over the line to avoid wow. those rocks, but this is where he's got a really fast line as he sweeps around the outside. Back to the inside, DeSalle. He's gonna try to use it. You saw that coming, Jeff. Great job by DeSalle. He even looks over to make sure he gave Short some room. He doesn't want to tangle with him. He's in the lead. And as they sit now, DeSalle would be your overall winner. dungie has got to start hustling. He can't let Short hold him up and let DeSalle get away. Short's gonna try to get him back as we go up the wall. Great racing here at Unadilla. So glad you folks could join us for the action live. Halfway mark. What is going to happen when we hit the stretch drive here in upstate New York? The fans are fired up about the action here today. Stay with us. When it's time to get ready to race. in the number seven, Sam Manuel, L&M Racing Yamaha out of this race. We anticipated the showdown with he and Ryan Dungey, but Stewart, who had been on the men from a broken wrist, apparently not able to finish the deal today physically. We'll try to get more info. Aaron is going to head to the pits and see if we can get a word with James Stewart and find out exactly what happened here. But we got to catch up with the battle for the lead. Clement de Salle out of Belgium is leading Ryan Dungey. And Ryan Dungey has won seven straight races in this tour. This is one of the strongest challenges he has dealt with all season, Jeff. Yeah, it certainly is. And boy, wouldn't that be an upset to have yeah. a European rider come in, um, you know, and uh, steal, steal the thunder here. But I'm telling you, we're only, well, there's 14 minutes left, plus two laps in this moto. And we've seen Dungey, he's been challenged at this time, um, you know, of the moto yep. uh, this season. But this is when he really starts to wick it up late in the second moto. That's when. Um, he just has seemed to rise above the competition, which in this case, you know, Andrew Short has been the gauge. But DeSalle, yeah. these guys haven't raced against him. Okay. And he's having the best year of his career on the Grand Prix circuit. So, uh, hey, this is a great ride, especially if you're Roger DeCoster, because you've got a Belgian rider who's riding a Suzuki. Yep. And you've got your own uh, rider, Ryan Dungey, your star. And both riders are battling for the overall and just, just wheeling away from uh, uh, third and fourth there. And these guys seem to hook up in every darn moto. Brett Metcalf on the number 24, the Geico Honda, and the factory Red Bull Honda of Andrew Short. And Short, it happens time and time again. He has the lead, and it seems like once somebody gets by, he starts having problems. He's gone all the way back to fourth. Metcalf taking over the third place position. Well, Short at one point was running down around the 211s, 212s. In the last few laps, it's been 214s, 214.5 here. But as we have this great battle for the lead, we've also got a, that spectacular battle as Metcalf came up there. And we know he's been strong. Dungey so. get a giant outside line. Nothing doing there. This is where Dungey, like you said, Jeff, has been so spectacular. He leaps to the side of the side, side by side. And they're headed to that wall that we talked about at the top of the show. It is straight down. Hang it, you turn and straight back up. Oh, look at DeSalle just dragging the rear brake all the way down, trying to get the Suzuki 450 stop. I'm oh, telling you, able to hold off Dungey. I've been so impressed. I, I, I mean, with both of these riders here today, they have been just phenomenal the skill set that they've shown and line choice and physical conditioning well we were talking about the motocross of nations at the top of this show which is a team event nation versus nation we've got a belgian rider out front an american in second and australian in third here goes dungeon the inside the has got some great lines figured out anywhere dungey goes the 463 seems to have an answer yeah and to follow up that event will be held in colorado uh, in, in Lakewood for the first time uh, here in the U.S. since 2007. Dungey's going to use an outside line in this right-hand turn. It's a long way around. that will lead him to the inside in the next corner. Well, this has been a passing spot all day Ooh. long. You see just how close that was. From that angle, it looks like, okay, the guy in the lead has got it handled, but then by the time they get to that tight left-hander, we've seen so many incredible passes uh, throughout the day here at qualified practice and in the first motos. But look at the track. You, you land and you G out. The rear shock and everything just gets tested as it, uh-oh, Dungey makes a mistake. This all's going to get back away. I was going to ask you about the roost. The longer Dungey's back there just eating rocks and eating dirt, less patient he's going to be to sit back here. I'll tell you what, it makes you mad, though. OK. If you're, and you know that you're the guy, you're physically fit, you're strong, the bike's great. When you're eating roost, you're, OK, I got to make a move here. And what we saw was Dungey really put on a charge. I mean, he hammered it. He says, OK, this lap, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to make the pass. But DeSalle withstood that charge. Yeah. So now you see Dungey, OK, now I need to regroup. 
especially through these really fast sections where you're fourth, even fifth gear on a 450. Sometimes, as we've seen this year, the roost has been so great that it'll actually knock the goggle lens loose in the rider's goggles, which I've never seen that. It seems like this year, now the bikes are making so much horsepower that that is an issue. Here's why this battle is so critical. In the first race today, Dungey won to solve a second. If DeSalle wins this second one, they will tie. They'll both have a first and a second on the day. And the tiebreaker is the better finish in the second race. They'll both score the same amount of points, each with a first and second. But DeSalle will be handed the overall championship for the day because he won the second race. So Dungey has to make this pass. Oh, and he gets nailed by the rocks and roost again. And you know what I think is interesting is both riders have a very patient riding style, very smooth, calculated. You don't really see their feet off the pegs, and they're not using a lot of, um, you know, energy. Oh. There's, there's, see, there's a little mistake there. Wow, Dungey makes another mistake, and there's more breathing room. We are within 10 minutes and two laps to go. Dungey's really gonna have to hustle now, or he might not be able to get this victory. As for the number seven of Stewart, we'll try to get a word with him when we return to upstate New York, AMA Pro Motocross. Next Sunday, Adrian Peterson and the Vikings take on Frank Gore and the 49ers. Sunday night football, next Sunday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on NBC. Unbelievable race for the lead going on here at Unadilla. Come up to Sal. Look at this. Ryan Dungey tries to make the pass to Sal. Says, no, I'm not going to let you have it. And they scrub opposite directions in midair over the sky shot. Here comes Dungey around the outside. Oh, he's got the line here, definitely. Yeah, he's got the inside. He holds his teammate off. And Dungey, well, he takes a look over his shoulder. They don't want to make contact because they're riding for the same team today. All right, now we're heading into that wall that we are talking about. Straight down, straight up. Get Dungey Desau, hugging the inside. Desau way on the outside. Oh, he's way behind now. No, okay. He's going to try to... Oh, but Dungey makes a mistake. I thought they were going to land on each other on that jump. Somehow Dungey able to hold the spot. Check it out, Jeff. Watch the replay here as they come down. Watch Dungey around the outside. Just finds a smooth line. Carries his momentum, which from the left back to the right, which becomes the inside. Nice pass for the lead for Ryan Dungey. Takes a little look over to see if this owl is going to clear that double and gain any momentum at all. Oh, Dungey almost came unglued to the landing. He is really pushing the pace now down the stretch. There you see the clock at the top of the screen. Six minutes and two laps left in this race. Well, I can tell you why uh, Dungey has got the lead. We saw the pass, but the result was it was a two minute, 10 second, 0.5 lap time for Ryan Dungey. The fastest lap of the moto was when Dungey passed us out there. He was on the gas. And Dungey lays down the first two minute, 10 second lap of this race. He is turning it on late when most riders would fade and be getting tired. Now, just a couple of days ago out in California, we had the Toyota Surfer Cross, which is a little more relaxed approach to motocross racing. Surfers and racers getting together. Check it out, the Toyota Surfer Cross, always a good time. 12 years ago, Mike Parson and I started this event. We were just friends and he surfed and I rode and I said, hey, you think it'd be cool to do a motocross and surfing? And he goes, yeah, let's try it. So we do a team race event now and just try to keep it fun and uh, definitely a uh, good time. So to determine the teams, we pull the names out of a hat. Basically, the surfers will go up and pull a motocross name out, and then that'll be the team for the, the whole event. Sonny, you're teamed up with Josh Grant. He's a better motocrosser than I am a surfer. And I can't surf at all, so I have to give all the credit to him. <laughs> to be someone like a Sonny Garcia, go out on the track and ride with guys that fast, or be someone like Josh Grant, come down here and you know ride these waves in front of some of the best surfers in the world, you have to sort of have no shame. It's my first year coming to Surfer Cross, and this whole week watching Shark Week, and I just totally psyched myself out. I, you know, for me, the last 12 years, my favorite event, probably the most important event for me, is being here today at Surfer Cross. I get to surf, I get to the ride. Yeah, I get to hang out with the, some of the world's best athletes. Sonny and I kind of had a little game plan going into it of just, all right, you, you ride smooth, make sure you do all the jumps, I'll, do, I'll go fast, I'll get the lap time. Now you can check out more coverage of that at alliesports.com, including our own Jeff Emig, who competed this year. Yeah, 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 go. We, yeah, we were right in there. I don't oh, really, really know what the overall finish right was, there. but the deal was a video surface of that area. There was a great white shark right where we were surfing just the day before, and the video surfaced after. 
Yeah, you'd rather not know while it's going on. Yeah. Now, this is the uh, shark in the water here. Ryan Dungey, his typical second moto plan. Other riders have the lead, other riders lead laps, but you just know he's there, you know he's lurking, and then he attacks, and he's got the lead. And it's unbelievable that he's turning in the fastest lap times of the day when the track is at its roughest, and when most of the riders have fatigue setting in. That's the kind of physical fitness this kid has. And, and what gets, what's to be uh, difficult at the end of this here is you can see as he works past some of the lap riders, some of the back markers, is that they are more physically fatigued, yeah. mentally fatigued. And so it's tough to work through uh, this lap traffic, but Dungey just, he's just slicing through them like they're not even there right now. Aaron yeah. Bates is over in the pits. Aaron, you have a report. What's happening to the number seven of James Stewart? Well, guys, I wish that I had more for you, but I had witnessed a frustrated and disappointed James Stewart storm into his rig. He went to the back, sat down. He was extremely silent. Nobody on the team is uh, kicking around at this point to ask any questions. Everybody's remaining hidden and silent, so I don't really have a report for that, but it's definitely not the way James Stewart wanted to make his return here at the end. No, no, definitely not, Aaron. The big anticipation of he versus Dungey, but it is a physical test of endurance. In practice, in qualifying today, Stewart was the fastest, but to do it for 30 straight minutes is a totally different story. Yeah, different story, and uh, James, pretty much every time he gets on the track uh, for like qualifying and stuff like that, he can go as fast as anyone. But like you said, you got to get out here on a hot day, um, you know, uh, negotiate the race and all the other riders. You, you, you just cannot practice that. Yep. So he cannot practice a bad start. You know what I'm saying? Ryan Dungey has been the master of that. When it's time to go racing, he's been awfully hard to beat this year, and he's out front again. Ryan is like a quiet storm, right? Invitational coming up next on NBC. It's an Ally Sports doubleheader here. We got motocross from upstate New York. Best skateboarders in the world coming up next. Aaron Bates, meanwhile, is in the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki pitch with one of the up and coming stars of the 250 class, Dean Wilson. Aaron? While the 450 race is going on, you're taking a look at one of the rising stars, the 108 of Dean Wilson. We caught up with him earlier away from the track in California. Here's a clip of what we have, and for more, go to AllySports.com. Every lights race, moto is just a battle. I'm really competitive. I mean, it doesn't really matter what I'm doing. I'm pretty competitive. You want to do a jump off with me? Oh! Usually the guys at the end of the moto are the guys that have really put the time in. He and Wilson, they are not really the best of friends off the track. That's my competitive state. It's not good. Uh, you folks got to check out the Allies show to see what it's like for these guys off the racetrack. When they put the helmets on here, it's pretty darn serious. But during the week, these guys are kids. They have some fun on and off the dirt bikes. So AlliesSports.com for more on that. There's Dungey. He's got a nice lead built up. Once he broke DeSalle, he broke away. It's a 9.7 second lead for uh, Dungey. Now Dungey is cruising. So DeSalle is closed back in just a little bit. But still, the gap is massive, Jeff. Yeah, and it's uh, quite a ways back there from uh, DeSalle to Metcalf right now. And uh, last time around, uh, DeSalle was a 16, 216. Now he turns a 215, so he picked it up. A couple laps ago was when he lost quite a bit of time. And uh, we got Brent Metcalf with a, another strong ride up into third. Waiting for the 24. And for those of you new to motor, motocross, you, you kind of see how it's the combination of speed and endurance. Early in the race, with three riders battling for the lead, 24 Metcalf wasn't too far back in a fourth, but as the race goes on, then the endurance becomes a factor, and that has been where Ryan Dungey has done his damage this year. Although this guy, Brett Metcalf, he's a pretty hard worker also. You just know you're going to get everything Metcalf has every week. He's a veteran out of Australia. Yeah, he certainly does, and, and uh, one thing that we touched on in the first moto is that in this class, there's you've got Metcalf on the Geico Power Sports Honda. You've got the Red Bull Honda here, which is the factory back um, ride with uh, with uh, short, and then actually we have uh, the Troy Lee Honda, which is not quite in there, but uh, Wyndham after a horrible yeah. crash, the first moto. What a comeback for Kevin Wyndham. Aaron, what happened there? Wyndham went down hard the first moto. You got an update on him? Video and game, guys. He actually injured his right elbow. He said he's not exactly sure what happened, but it was definitely tweaked. He had it iced up. He was ready to go for this moto, but he said, did you take a look at that crash? Because it was probably one of the hardest fills I've ever taken in my career, so I'm extremely lucky. Yeah, I did not expect to see the 14 back out here. The 32-year-old, originally from Louisiana, now lives in uh, Centerville, Mississippi. And he's only out here basically at a part-time role. And 
digging down deep today. Yeah, and uh, Wyndham, uh, normally on the Geico Power Sports Honda team, is now running the Red Bull Honda in place of injured Davey Millsaps. But, wow, like yeah. you said, he just took one of the hardest crashes of his career, and now here he is. Oh, he's trying to get around short. This is wild, this battle right now. And just like we saw earlier with DeSalle and Dungey, these guys got to be careful. They ride for the same team, so don't knock each other down. Well, and also, you know, we had uh, uh, talked about the picks for the Motocross of Nations team. Um, even though uh, Wyndham has not rode motocross most of the summer, the beginning part, he's only filling in part-time. Uh, he was definitely on my list of riders that you would, um, you know, um, um, you know uh, consider for the yep. team. Uh, typically, he's a great starter. Uh, he's an even better finisher at times. So, uh, and right now, he's battling uh, Andrew Short, who got the nod and got the spot for the MX3 position. There it is, folks. Final lap. They're waving the white flag. Last time around, can Short hold off Wyndham to try to be the top factory Red Bull Honda rider in this one? The Geico Honda of Metcalf has gotten them both. He's in third with two Suzuki's out front. Dungey headed to the checkered flag. Unbelievable. Dungey has had so many riders to get through this year, and every time they raise the bar, he finds a way to get over it again. This time it was Clement Vassal that he had to clear. Well, and, and I asked around the pits, the industry insiders, and it was kind of all over the place, but there were certain people that said, Stewart is going to go out and blow everybody away today. I too, for sure. Right? And then you had other riders, or, or you know, other people that said, no, nope, Dungey is just too strong. There is a changing of the guard happening. Right. Yep. Okay, so. Well, Dungey has answered uh, all of the questions today. Um, still a lot of uh, unanswered questions for James Stewart. And uh, even, he, you know, he admitted a little bit, a uh, little bit soon maybe to be coming back. He was just too excited, just could not, if I could ride, I don't want to be sitting at home on the couch. But for the number five here, he's continuing on what is going to be a legendary uh, year to be a rookie uh, champion in Supercross. And if he can complete this championship, be the first time in motocross and, and supercross that anyone has ever accomplished that feat as a rookie. Yeah. Amazing. It's just a hard, hard thing to imagine. He's still a rookie. He's only going to get better. He's only 20 years old. What is he going to be in five years? Just maybe more of this. This is a preview of 2015 at this point. Yeah, he's, he's riding uh, like a veteran rider who just has done this a million times. But uh, this is his first season on a 450 in AMA motocross. Well, he's got the tutelage of some of the best in the sport. His team manager, Roger DeCoster, he rides and trains at Ricky Carmichael's house, and he's doing it like them. He was a winner here at the legendary Unadilla Valley Sports Center. His mechanic, Mike Gosler, is pumped. We'll be back to talk to our winner, and we'll check in with Jamie Bestwick, who's at the Dew Tour in Portland. We'll check in with our buddy who's out there. Great day for action sports here at NBC. Hey, I'm Josh Grant, taking the Toyota for Portland, Oregon. Well, it's good to see you out there, Jamie. We'd rather have you here. It's always fun having you at the motocross races. We'll try to get Best Trick back and chat some motocross about him at some point, but uh, it's going to be fun out there in Portland also. Oh, no doubt. Exciting event out there. All right, Lucas Oil race recap. Here's how it went down in upstate New York. James Stewart at number seven gets pinched off, and that's going to tell the story for him. More on that in a moment. Andrew Short's going to control the lead off the start. Stewart mired in traffic, not physically ready, I guess, to complete his second moto. He's out, Jeff. Frustrating uh, day after uh, being the fastest qualifier. Clement Vassal, the Belgian, is going to go after Andrew Short for the lead, and he gets it. Well, and, and once he got the lead, he held it for quite a long time, put in a strong ride, was actually in the position to take the overall until a very hard charge came from the rain, or the points leader, Ryan Dungeon. Yeah, yeah, he's got an even more massive points lead after this because he's going to make the pass. It was a great duel. But Dungey down the stretch, as he's been doing all summer long, he's got the fitness, the endurance, and he's also got the big trophy, because he is your overall winner. Let's check out the results to tell you exactly how it broke down here. As the fans, man, there's a lot of them, and they were treated to a great race between Dungey and DeSalle. There is your top 10. Nice job by Kevin Windham to get short on the last lap for fourth. Let's head down to the podium with Aaron Bates. Ryan Dungey continues to be unstoppable, extending that points lead once again. Ryan, at this point, is it starting to become a reality? Can you taste this title? Yeah, you know, we just try one race at a time, and uh, that's the goal, you know, it's the end result. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, I just got to give up. Team Rockstar, Makita Suzuki, off doing an unbelievable job, and uh, my family, everybody, and uh, track, track was rough, that moto, and uh, Dassault, me and him were going at it, so it's good to have him over here from overseas, and uh, just fun racing, really. Congratulations on a job well done.
Oh, we've got great events lined up here as Ally Sports all year long. Of course, the Wendy's Invitational next, the Toyota Challenge in September, and the New Tour Championships on October 16th and 17th. Check it out, not only AllySports.com, the website, but our coverage on NBC with NBC Sports. It's the place for action sports, and we're glad Motocross is a part of it, Jeff. Oh, they certainly are. That's a great website. Awesome. We'll be right back. Celebration on the podium. International celebration on the podium. Good day of racing for everyone today. I'm back here, massive crowd around the podium to celebrate Ryan Dungey, Kamal DeSalle, and Brett Metcalf's strong rides today. Here are the series standings. Andrew Short still clinging to the second place spot. Metcalf closing down on him today. I tell you, as you take a look at those overall points there, that podium position, all that sea, that ocean of people yeah. and spraying the champagne, that is what it's all about. I love that. Aaron Bates that is stuff. right in the middle of it. Let's send it back down to Aaron. Clement DeSalle all smiles with a performance like that. Clement, coming in, you said you weren't going to say too much. You let the racing do the talking for you. Did you exceed your expectations? Yeah, I exceed my expectation because, uh, no, I didn't crash today and uh, I make two times second. Yeah, it's better to be two times first, I know, but... And, ...and my girlfriend, a uh, big kiss, because they cannot come here, and uh, thanks to everybody. Oh, welcome aboard, great ride. He's not going to be here with us for our final three rounds, unfortunately. But we hope you folks can join us. Speed will have the coverage of the final rounds of this tour. Massachusetts, Dungey has a shot at clinching the title there. Then Steel City just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Delmont. And then a new round, Palo, California, outside of San Diego. Let's send it back down to Aaron. Brett Metcalf takes that third place overall. And Brett, during the break, you guys had actually made some changes to the engine setup for some more bottom end. How much did that help at this track? Well, I think it helped a lot coming up the hills, but my start was still really bad, so it didn't help there. But, you know, I've got to get up to the Geico Power Sports Honda team, Factory Connection, uh, you know, the whole team, Dunlop Tires. We're getting a reasonable start, but good on the track, so thanks, everyone. Thank you. Terrific job, and all your hard work's continued payoff. Remember, folks, we're not done. We're going to have the Dew Tour Wendy's Invitational next. Ryan Sheckler, Chad Ortiz, a talented group of skaters all competing. That's the Wendy's Invitational, part of the Dew Tour, coming up next. Jeff Emig, it's a wrap for motocross here from upstate New York, and Ryan Dungey answered the challenge again. Well, that was it. There was a lot of unanswered questions. Yep. And uh, Stuart, yes, yeah, still fast, not ready to be back at this level. Dungey, definitely the man and on his way to making history. Now the question is, can Stuart recover physically? continue the rehab on the wrist, get in shape, and maybe challenge Dungey over the last three rounds of this tour. So AllySports.com will have the info. More questions. Yeah, more questions. That's why we like it. So everybody's happy. We had an Australian, a European, and an American up on the podium today. The much-anticipated Dungey and Stewart showdown. The fans were excited about that. But ultimately, Ryan Dungey comes out on top. We're so glad you're able to join us for this. For Aaron Bates and Jeff Emig, I'm Jason Wygant. This has been Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Racing. Congratulations to our winner, Ryan Dungey.